Gary, would you lead us in prayer? Most gracious Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this day and that uh, we can meet together here, this uh, institution of knowledge that uh, we can make decisions that further this college. We're thankful for opportunities that you provided for us. Uh, we're, uh, we're just thankful for the blessings that you poured upon each of us in this college as well. These things we pray in Christ's name. Yeah. Thanks, Jerry. Um, this thing, I had one off the original in the first order didn't just kill me. It is. Yeah, I, I, there's the reprise. All right, first order of business is discuss the Kilman property bids and its recommendation. Uh, you all were sent. Um, copies of these uh, bids. We had multiple offers come in uh, with the highest one being a million fifty. Uh, was wanting to see if anyone had any questions over any of these bids. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to accept the bids per the committee's recommendation to sell to uh, Randall Nodal a million fifty thousand. Zero. Uh, second. And a second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Um, we, you were also sent uh, information about a phone, the phone system that we're trying to upgrade. Uh, and uh, do we like to have some discussion about this or? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, Lord, thank you for your time this morning. Um, we have been looking or, or at uh, what we're going to do with our phone system long term. Our current system, as it stands today, is already in the Y. We can update it one more time, and we think that's going to run out in probably about two years as far as expectations. We don't have actual dates from Cisco yet. But we know we're going to have to make a transition to a new phone system sometime in the near future. So with our recent uh, uh, acquisition and use of our Microsoft 365 environment, we've, just, we, we've, we've uh, identified an opportunity to move our existing phone capabilities into the Microsoft stack over, the, over a period of time allowing us to save money and integrating our phone system into a feature set that mo that many of our faculty and staff are using or beginning to use today. So the proposal here is, is for uh, us to, to make that migration. The, the one um, uh, item that we need to address, which is in the proposal section is, you look at the top, you see kind of what our current solution set looks like for our phone system. And, uh, you know, currently we're, we're, it's costing us about $82,000 per year and the cost will go for about 5% per year. And you can see those costs at the top of that proposal. The upgrade system ultimately saves the, the, the college money the reason for the higher cost for this uh, for this um, uh, proposal is because we will have to replace all of the desktop handsets. None of those can be used in this migration to Microsoft Teams. And in fact, if we uh, if we don't do this now, if we decide to go with a different phone system in the future, these handsets won't work there either. We are going to have to replace all of our desktop handsets. We know that because of the age of them and the supportability of what they call the firmware, which is kind of the internal code for each one of those uh, desktop handsets, there's not compatible anymore. We are gonna have to replace all of that hardware. And that's probably our biggest cost going forward. Uh, if it wasn't for the desktop handsets, we could see an immediate uh, return on, on the migration to the Microsoft or our phone system. And you can see here um, in the middle of that uh, of that uh, option to kind of what those costs will look like for us to upgrade the phone system. It's that initial 136,000 that's mostly tied up into the desktop handsets. And then every year after that, our costs range somewhere in the $50,000 range 
for support and services for that system uh, as, as we have identified today. Um, much of the cost for that 136,000 is down at the bottom of that page. And these are items that uh, uh, Lonnie has been able to uh, move to other services already. Um, and, and so you look at things uh, here at the bottom, uh, the uh, costs that we had budgeted for paying for hotspots um, around campus, those costs have been transferred to almost all the departments. And so it's budgeted allocation that we will not use to pay for those hotspots that we can apply toward this project. Uh, we have moved the, the PWEC um, off of a dedicated internet connection to our what we call our SD WAN, which is how all the campuses talk to each other. And that's saving us $13,000 uh, out of our budget as well. And you can see each one of these down here. The, I think it's, it's worth noting that the 48,000 that we had budgeted for the phone system was money that we have set aside knowing that we were probably going to need, need to go to a new phone system sometime. So we actually had that in, in this year's budget and we had not used that $48,000. So that could also be applied to this migration. And then you see some other costs there. We, we uh, have eliminated all analog lines. Uh, the last analog lines we had were for our fire systems. And those are all based on cellular tower traffic now. We don't use lines for those anymore. So we've got some cash there. So all in all, we've got the money set aside in our existing budget to cover the cost of that $136,000. That we've what we've trained, what we eliminated services we no longer need. The budget's still there. We can take that budget and we can apply to this and get us through this initial cost for this project. Does that make sense? Is that clear? I know that's kind of that's a lot of, a lot of moving parts there. Mm -hmm. Any questions about that piece of it? So the so the so the last page here is basically what that what those costs will look like over five years. Um, uh, to, to, to the best of our ability. So you see the top line is if we just continue with what we have or something similar, that's what those costs are going to look like over the next five years. And one thing we need to reflect on is if we were to, to maintain a uh, on-premise phone system like one we have now with Cisco, when we purchased that in, in uh, 2013, that cost us $440,000 to do that. That was for all the hardware, the server room, all the devices, all the lines, all that kind of stuff. So it's a pretty significant uplift to just make that transition to another on-prem. I don't think it'll be four to forty thousand dollars again, but what that points to is it's probably going to be a very significant cost to do that. So, so if uh, so, somewhere out here, probably around the year three or year four, those costs are not going to be cut. So we know there's going to be a major uplift to get to that new phone system. But with all the cloud technology and all the stuff that we have available to us today, we think this is a good time to transition our phones to a, a cloud option. And that proposal for the, is that second line there, which again, there's that there's that initial outlay of 136,000 that we have to have for this year to do this right now. We've identified those funds. And then generally our costs are gonna be in the upper 50s to lower 60s per year. Now, just to make sure you understand uh, one more thing is that Lonnie has continued to kind of work on this. And we have identified a lower price point for the desktop handsets. We just we just received those proposals, I think it's Friday. So we think we're going to be able to lower the cost of the handsets significantly by about $20,000. And then we are also looking at a, two proposals now that don't include what they call a managed services component. So in other words, we would kind of continue to run the system ourselves. We wouldn't rely, we, we, we wouldn't rely on a third party to keep the system running for us. And that would also lower our costs significantly. We don't have real good numbers on that quite yet. We know the phone devices, we, we've got a good idea of what the phones are gonna cost us, but we're still working on the managed services component. But I think what, what, what I feel confident to say is that no matter where we land here, it's going to be lower than the cost you see here on this sheet. And so my, my best uh, 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 guesstimates at this point is that over this same five-year period, instead of saving the 70, $73,000 we have here, it's probably going to be more around ninety-two dollars or $93,000 during that same period. So it's all kind of, we're, we're still kind of working on this and we'd like to get it done this year because we have these funds available in our current fiscal year to cover that $136,000 or thereabout 
to get this thing moving forward. So we really want to kind of bring this to you now, see if we get this gets approved and move this forward. And but what I think is that our overall cost will be lower than what we're seeing on these sheets today. So at that point, I'll open that up for questions. Uh, David, yes, um, the the five year period is that a fixed cost? Is that contractually committed? It's not. It's 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 our it's our um, uh, estimates based on a five percent increase in cost per year, and uh, and it's and and so the the cost here in year one, the eighty two seven hundred is a fixed cost. We know what that's going to cost us. So it's forward. fixed for one year. Yes, sir. And then subject to escalating escalating costs cost after that. Yes, sir. But not necessarily at five percent. That's correct. Okay, but you've built in five. Yes, sir. We did. Okay. Um, next question would be, and I, I think my last one because you know this is your area, and I'm I'm already past mine, okay. my level, uh, a good while back. If you determine the need to exit, you know some of these things that are get you connected so that it, it, however unhappy you might later become. You, you can't go away because you basically have to destroy and start over. Uh, how do you feel about that? How married to them are you at the end of five years, if you want to? I guess it would be at the end of any year it, if you're only committed a year, year. A year at a time. Yeah, so um, the move to Microsoft is tied into our existing agreement, which the last time we signed that agreement, was in 2022, it was for a three year commitment. And so, from a phone perspective, we're not tied to that, but we are tied to that from the perspective of our email and those kinds of core functionalities that this system provides. Bringing the phones into that same environment just allows us to provide for um, all the, the people that work here at TVCC. A common interface that they're already beginning to use in teams and we're just bringing in the phone systems so it's a lot like your zoom experience here right so we end up um, having a a, a a a window in a browser that somebody uses to connect myself and you or or mike or whatever we're having this conversation but now within the teams environment now i get to not only just talk to you I can see on the screen, I can share files, we can edit files together. Right? So now it becomes this really rich collaborative experience that everyone gets to start having. And so we can, so, so since we have this three year agreement with Microsoft, to get more back to your question, now we can start plugging in where we think it's appropriate. And where it's not appropriate, we just don't plug in. So the question will be, so your question is, so we, we go ahead and we decide to do this with the phones. And let's say next year we decide, boy, that was just the first decision. Other we don't like that. We can always back away from that phone decision and we can go a different direction. The direction could be we bring it all back in house like, we, like we're doing today. We buy a lot of very expensive Cisco equipment and we redeploy and we just do that. The risk we run there, David, is that we get to that point, all set, all those phones you bought aren't compatible anymore. So now we got to read about it. We have to rebuy all those devices. That's probably our, our biggest risk in this in this scenario. And so and, and so we're we're not tied to this phone system because we have an agreement that says we have to stay with this phone system. We're tied to Microsoft 365 for at least two more years. The phone system we can plug or unplug as we see fit. We can unplug or plug other things as well. But we will never get away from that Microsoft agreement until we get at least past two more years. The reality of it is, I don't see us getting away from that at all. We have to have email. We have to have some sort of collaboration space. And so we're, we're either going to do Microsoft or we're going to do Google. That's probably about the only two options that are viable for, for an institution of higher education. Microsoft just brings a very rich set of feature set the, of, of features to our world that plugs directly into the operating system that's set by the front end. So that's the reason we like that so much. All right, thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Hearing none, do I hear a motion to approve? 
I'll make that note. I'll second. All in favor? Any discussion? All in favor? Uh, motion carries. Thank you, Dave. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, next item on business is uh, consider and discuss emergency replacement of boilers in Cardinal Hall. Uh, Dr. Morrison, would you give us a little report on what's been going on with this and what, what, what we're going uh, to do? Yes, sir. Uh, we currently have two boilers operating in the hall. One has been down uh, about the last three years, from my understanding. And the second one has been went down a couple weeks ago. We got it fired back up, uh, but it's unreliable. And we're about, you know, by the end of the summer, we'll have our students moving back in, and we have to have a reliable water source. Now, there is also some concerns, and Tony's on the Zoom. He can also answer He's, he's headed here. He's headed here. He's on his yeah. Way. Um, concerns about bacteria building up in the tanks and because it's not functioning. Um, this is something that, you know, our students have to have hot water. And uh, what we're asking today, uh, using the emergency clause, if determined by the board, they see fit to take uh, uh, quotes on replacing the two boiler systems uh, in order to be ready for the fall semester. The current boiler systems were when they were installed about 12 years ago, I believe. Um, that company is no longer in business. So there's no parts available for those boilers. So it's leading us to a complete replacement of those boiler, two boilers. And uh, this is something Tony, David, and I've been working over the last couple of weeks to come up with the best solution, best recommendation to the board. So what we're asking the board is to use some of the money in the contingency with a little bit of buffer, hoping to in case nothing comes up uh, while they're in there replacing the boilers. But you know with anything, there's always a risk of something else coming up. The engineers estimated around $155,000 um, to replace both boilers and a um, pump. And so, we're just wanting to get the board approval to move forward because it's about a four to six week um, lead time in getting the equipment in and probably another two to three weeks for installation. Well, we're now in August when this and students will be moving in, you know, mid August. So. <clears throat> Questions for David or myself? Uh, I just, we were visiting about this that this is considered an emergency situation is what we've been told which it sounds like one the only concern that i had I, this morning when we were just discussing this is that i know we have certain bid processes we have to go through as i understand uh lee's been consulted and there is quote, it's kind of a broad brush thing it is an emergency situation it's up to the board to determine that situation this, it appears to be a health and safety factor because of the possible contamination of water in the, in the, in the uh, boiler itself. And also, uh, we certainly need to have it from a functional standpoint, because mm -hmm. if you don't have hot water, you've got 200 something students that are going to be in there come the first week of August, second week of August. So, you know, I just want to make sure we're on solid ground on declaring an emergency. Uh, I know David Hopkins has researched this a little bit and spoke with Lee about it, uh, but I just think that's something we need to be aware of. It, if this is an emergency, I don't know what would be though. This is pretty important to the function of that building. Uh, David, do you have anything to say? Well, let me just, Steve, just so, just so that everybody knows under the what the, Law says that if the board determines that the delay posed by the procurement methods under Texas Education Code 44031, that's putting in the newspaper, sealed bids, all, all those methodologies, would prevent or substantially impair the conduct of classes or other essential school activities, then contracts for the replacement or repair of the equipment or facility 
may be made by other methods. Of course, the other methods we will, uh, through email or other methods, we will determine quotes. We're not just going to say we pick you, but we're we're avoiding, you know, 30 days to put it in the newspaper and then four weeks of delivery time. We're just trying to get going. That's straight out of the law. That's not coming from me. So that's what we were just talking about is the board determines that impairment. In my opinion, it's an impairment. And, and you might have said this, Jason, but they, they did say if we elect to go with this option, it's going to be four to six weeks delivery time on these things, which really puts us kind of getting pretty close to we need to have them up and running. And Tony's had a mechanical engineer with this. I mean, he's just, we're not going at this line. So, you know, people are going to have to bid on something, and he's working with an engineer. Tony, do you have any uh, thoughts or? No, sir, that is it. Uh, we've had a mechanical engineer on board looking at it, helping us with the design and the scope of work. Uh, this is their recommended policy or their recommended procedure that we go about. So uh, I spoke with David about having it deemed an emergency and he said, well, we need to get that before the board and have the board approval. And, uh, but we have had multiple vendors already come in and look at the work. So as soon as we get the clearance to do so, we'll start collecting bids and try to get this moving along ASAP. Is there anything in the bids that will um, allow for the, since we've had stagnant water sitting there in various lines for some time with one of these boilers, is there any bids associated with what we're getting to flush out the lines or how do we make it? Make... Yes, sir. That is part of the scope of work. Uh, and there might be a chance, uh, just in case to kind of put it out there, uh, there is a 400 gallon holding tank on the first floor. Um, there might be need to, at some time in the future, uh, replace that, which would be an additional expense. Or as you said, uh, sir, in the flushing out uh, process, if we determine that it's not structural, you know, then that would be an additional cost. But we do believe at this time, a cleaning out and flushing of that um, is, is adequate unless we find additional problems. And there'll be some testing of water that goes along with this? Oh, the... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The um, water temperatures, anything over, I believe it was 131 degrees is, is what we need. We need to be able to maintain 131 uh, I believe it's a minimum that we have to be able to hold in that holding tank. Anything above that, we're golden. It takes care of, of all these issues. David, do you have anything? Oh, I, no, I understand circumstance and agree with the, with the course of action and the urgency. Now, if I'm hearing you correctly, David. I think you identified the board can deem an emergency according to his judgment. Right, you know, based on those impairments. The question yeah. then runs to somewhere in the statute, I think I recall that there is a process for emergency action. I'm just asking, are we satisfied that what we're doing here today, sitting down, having it put the force, meets that requirement? In other words, you can call an emergency meeting, obviously, uh, but but there are requirements to be met, and I'm not trying to 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 pick around the edges at it, but just to be sure that that we're we're taking those steps. I mean, I'm satisfied that yes, the board can say this is an emergency. I agree, there could be a health issue. But as far as the steps to be taken, I'm not hearing clearly whether we we have that in front of us. Do you, does anyone know? Well, the, the, the law that I just read that says other methods, the law talks about several different methods and, and they, they've got all kinds of exceptions. Whether you're hiring technical consultants like somebody for Dave's area, he just says negotiate the best value for the whatever. But I will I will clarify with Lee if, if there is a codicil I'm not aware of, I'll make sure. Yeah, I'm speaking more to the, to the government code component rather than health and safety part, which I think is where you left at that. But yeah, yeah, this this is the education code, which is what addresses 
this process for us, you know, the city, it was different. And it was local government code, the education code, the rules here. But I will certainly verify that. Uh, this just says other methods. And the ones I quoted is some of the other methods, depending on, on what you're doing. Uh, this just, normally you would do sealed bids and, and I'll, I'll put it in the newspaper. I, I, I get it on that. And again, and again not, I'm well aware that there are uh, extreme shortcut measures, sure. but those shortcut measures require that a specific process be followed. And I'm just wanting to validate that we know what that process is and that that's exactly what we're doing in the action here today. Well, if there's something I missed, I'll, I'll verify with me. Uh, and when we start taking bids, uh, I don't think there is, but I will verify that. It's a good thought, yeah. Could we make a, I mean, should it be the pleasure of the board to go forward with this as presented? Could we make it subject to uh, getting a final approval and leave with your consultation? Sure. You know, if, if, the, if this meeting had been called to address this issue on a short-term basis, I would be satisfied. But since it just appeared and happened to align with this meeting, I have some concern if we are, in fact, still covered under that, that emergency provision. I don't know the absolute answer. And, and I'm just wanting to be sure that, that we have that answer before we, uh, we move ahead. Can you accept a motion to approve the action subject to Legal review. I, I think that's what we need to I'll do, in my opinion. For that. Do I hear a second to that motion? No seconds. Any discussion? Hearing none, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All, all, all opposed, like sign. Motion carried. Uh, next, we're getting ready to convene an executive session, but before we go, I just realized that when we made the motion to approve the Kilman property, we didn't state the name of the parties involved and, and document the contract we took. Now, our committee had made that recommendation with the um, uh, the no contract on that, but I was wondering if we should amend that uh, motion um, either now or when we come out of that, just to reflect the name of the contract that we've accepted and make it a, of the record. I thought, I thought you did. I did. did you did say, did. Randall, no? Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't. Oh, okay. Okay, very good. I'm sorry. I just want to make sure. All right. So at this time, we'll convene an executive session to pursuant to Executive Government Code 55 1 072 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. We need a motion. Do I hear a motion? I hear it. So we'll second. All in favor? Do you want me to stay in executive session? You may need David as well. All right. Yeah, David, you stay home. Okay, who made the motion to return and what time? Uh, Mike made it and then Jerry seconded it. I think it's actually David. They, oh, David made it. Okay. David made it. It was 11 10. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, next item of business is reconvene to take any necessary action regarding real property. Uh, since we don't have any now, uh, I propose we. No action. No action. Okay. Uh, do I hear a motion to adjourn? We've done all we need to do on the Kelman property. As long as we got the name on there. What we do? Mm -hmm. uh, Ron, is, uh, uh, Trustee Day has uh, made a uh, motion to adjourn to your second. All in favor? Right. We got a good week this week. Yeah.